Hello, I'm Philip from Oracle Analytics Product Management. This video shows how to use simple analytics techniques in Oracle Analytics data visualization to find out interesting insights about world taxation datasets. The data we use here originates from public websites. One is from UN University about history of worldwide tax rates, and the other one is from Eurostat website specifically on taxations in Europe countries. So let's look at the first file we downloaded, which shows 15 years of history for the world tax rates expressed as percent of gross domestic product. So this is a file with country names, GDP, and then percent of GDP information for all natures of government revenue. So I have uploaded these CSV files in my OEC environment, and you can see here the different metrics. I have set the proper aggregation rule for all these percentages, average. And I have pre-formatted all columns as percents with the proper formatting. So let me just double click on total government income as percent of GDP, 30%. So over the past 15 years, almost one third of world gross product has gone to financing governments. Let's check this over time, double click on year, and I see a trend as a bar chart here. Let's make this be a line. So we can see that this oscillates around 30% with a variation around the 2008 crisis. So let's see this detail by region now and drag the region as a trellis column. Aha, we can see quite some contrast between regions already. Let me drag region as a color so we can better distinguish. So pretty much for every region in the world, the toll from government financing on GDP has increased, except for North America. And we can also see that Europe consistently has the highest ratio with over 40% of GDP gone to government financing. Let's show a simple map here just to be clear on which country belongs to which region. So here's the map, pretty straightforward. Let me drag it and arrange my canvas. I'll move the legend on the right so we can better see the map. And I will remove the legend from the top chart because it's redundant with the map. So I do like to have summary overview data. So let me quickly have a bar chart with government income percentage by region, but not trended. So here's my bar chart. I'll drag it at the bottom and I'll throw color into it so we're consistent with the map. Ha! Ah, that needs to be made stacked bar chart because we have a dimension as x-axis and one as color. So here's my stack bar chart. Let me remove the legend as well. Let me fix the title of the label. Let me remove it. And why don't we bring across data labels? So let me turn this to automatic and here are the percentages. So close to 41% for Europe and 22% for Latin America, for example, almost half of it. But these are percent of GDP, so they're relative to the gross product. And they don't really tell me if as a citizen of Europe, I really pay more money than other citizens in other regions. Besides, I'm looking at average of percentages. So in the case of my calculation, a small country counts for the same as a big country. So this is not a good indicator. So one simple thing I could do to fix this is to bring the gross product as part of the same chart. Here we go. So a second y-axis was created. Let me give it a different format so we can distinguish. And here we can see now gross product of every region. So we can sort of infer where the biggest tax dollars are being paid. However, I'm not so satisfied with the aggregation of these percentages. So I'd like to build a real calculation. So let me save this canvas and rename it first. Let me call it percent of GDP. Let me duplicate the canvas so we use it as a basis to build more calculations. So here's the new canvas. Let me remove the GDP. And let's now build a custom calculation where we multiply the tax percent of GDP by the GDP dollar. So we get the real amount of taxes paid for each country for each year. So let's name this calculation government income dollars. And as I start typing the name of a column, it searches and offers me the column that exists in the data set with this name, like GD, and I'll click on GDP, for instance. Let me save that. And that's it. Our calculation is built and we can use it in the chart. So if I scroll down, I see it under my calculations and I drag it over the current value that we have in the chart. Ah. Now we have different trends here. East and South Asia, Europe and North America have by far been the biggest contributors to world governments over the past 15 years. An interesting fact is that East and South Asia have more than doubled in their contributions during that period. Notice as well that North American numbers increased, which is quite different from the first percentage chart that we were seeing earlier. Let's drag that metric in the overview chart as well, and we should see a contrast 
even better. Let's remove that legend from the map just to get more real estate for the charts. So since we're talking about dollars and not ratios anymore, I think we should change that bar chart into a pie chart. So let me do this and it will represent proportions. Let me sort this by decreasing proportions and let me add the values of the regions so we can see so percent and label. Now we will see the regions. So Europe, North America and East Asia provided close to 90% of public money accumulated over the past 15 years. So what are these taxes? Are we talking sales tax? Are we talking income tax? What is it that makes it up? Which tax is the one that brings the most money to all these governments? So easy, we can just replicate the same calculation with different tax natures as we have them in the data set. So let me start with income and capital gains tax as percent of GDP multiply by GDP. And I'll just select GDP, here we go. Save this and I can replicate the same calculation for different tax natures. So sales tax here. So let me drag the previous calculation and I'm just going to replace an object. To replace an object, I simply click on it, replace it by picking a new one, and here's my sales tax calculation. Again, let me do another one just to repeat it. So let's use property tax now. I'm going to drag sales tax calculation, click on the taxes on goods and services, search for property and pick it up. Again, calculation, let's bring across, let's do social contribution, let's bring across sales tax, let me click on the tax goods and services, let me filter on social, and here's a social contribution, I pick it and I save. And I have my four calculations right there. So I will select them and I will drag them across to replace the total government tax. So let me remove region from the color. So now, now we can see which tax makes up the, the most money. So now let's do the same on the pie chart. Let's drag these uh, columns across and override the previous one. Oh, we need to remove the region color. And here's the breakdown. So sales tax, income tax, and social contribution is the bulk of public funding over the past 15 years. But if you notice on the trending, not equally in every region. Sales tax and social contribution lead in Europe, income tax in North America, and sales tax has been increasing in East and South Asia. Wow. So now it starts to make some more sense to me which bucket all these tax lines are falling into. If I had to pick a region to move into just on tax reasons, that would help. But what would really help is to have the same diagram per capita. So we really get a sense of the tax burden at the individual level. So let's do it. Before we do this, let's just undo our pie chart and let's just uh, do a little bit of dressing of the canvas here. Let's go back to the stacked bar chart and let's remove the region and put it in category. So we need, we see the value of dollars per region per nature. Let's also edit this uh, trend. Let's remove the year names just so that we have more for the chart itself. Turn off the label axis. Let's rename that canvas. Let's call it uh, US dollars and then we will just duplicate it so we can reuse it for our next calculation. Let me duplicate that. And all we need to do now is the same custom calculation as we've done before, but using GDP per capita as opposed to GDP. We have that information. So I'm going to use the calculation we did before, click on GDP, replace it with GDP per capita, give it a name, and here's the income tax per capita. So now we need to do the same for the three other metrics, but to save time on the movie, I have fast forwarded that part. So I'm going to add a calculation for sales tax. It would be the same process. I'm just fast forwarding here, social contribution and property tax. Now we have these four metrics and calculations. I'm going to remove the existing metrics from the chart and drag the new metrics. And now that's interesting. We see contributions per capita per nature. Let's update also the bar chart just to have a global view. I'm going to drag these metrics on the bar chart. And before we take a closer look, let me quickly do a little bit of formatting. Let me remove the title of the value axis because it's busy. And let's just bring total labels on the chart so we know what we're talking about. Here we go. Wow. So these per capita number are very different from the previous charts. 
we can see that Europeans and North Americans are by far the individuals that pay the higher taxes in the world. 11,000 and 13,000 US dollars per year. For US, 50% is of income taxes and it's been varying over the years. For Europe, it's split between social contribution, income tax and sales tax. So let me rename that Canva first for the sake of clarity. Let me call it US per capita. And then let's see how we can look this at the country level, not at the region level. So one easy way for me to do this is to use the map as a filter, use this filter, and then click on any country. Let's say France, for instance, as I do this, I can see the numbers for France only, and that's about 16K per inhabitant per year. Click on the US, and that's 12K. Click on UK, and here's a breakdown for UK, which is 13K. So that's good, but what if I wanted to see the whole world and a given country on the same chart at the same time. Let me disable the users filter, go back to the starting point, and we can easily do a calculation for this. So let's create a custom, custom calculation. Let's call it France social contribution per capita. And we're going to use a filter function. Filter needs a measure and a close. So let's pick a measure here. The measure is the social contribution. It's the calculation we've done social contribution per capita and we want that metric only when country ISO is equal to FRA. All right, let's save this and let's drag it across in the trellis view and that will show us a specific line for France social contribution as part of the Europe column. We can use multiple filter columns in a single report. So let me create the same formula for sales tax. So sales tax per capita using country ISO equals FRA. So that will just restrict to only sales tax for friends. Let me drag that column object here. And here's the second line. Let me format these lines in a specific color. So I'll go to color, manage assignments and assign a specific color to these two matrices. Let me take a gray and a black just so that they differentiate. So at this point, using our first data set, I have gotten pretty clear insight of individual tax contribution over history by any country. What we are missing is how this relates to their own individual revenue. And this happens to be the information that we have for European country in the second data file, Eurostate data file. So we have percent of direct and indirect taxes estimated to the individual's revenue and percent of sales tax to the individual's revenue. I have set this to average aggregation and I am adding this data set. Let me make sure that this is joining to our initial file. Let me create the join. We're going to use the ISO country code as a single joint. So we have the same country in both files, or actually same ISO code, not the same countries. And let's go and visualize this now. So let's collapse this and find our data set. And let's double click on the direct and indirect taxes as percent of individuals revenue, 25.1% on average in Europe. As I double click on country ISO, I get the bar chart distribution. Let me sort it by high taxes to low taxes. And I will add also a, an average line. So for this, I'll go to add statistics, reference line, and by default, that's an average line. So that is interesting here because when we look at percent of individual income, French direct taxes are below our European average. The chart we saw earlier suggested that French per capita taxes were way higher than other countries but when expressed as percent of income, they're below. Let me mark the color of the French data point in red, just so that we see it in, as we go through the charts. To better compare the countries, let's drag the GDP metric from the other data set into this chart. So I'm dragging the object, and as I do this, I can see that all of the countries from the world appear on my chart, even though my European data set only has European countries. That's coming from the join definition, which shows all rows from both data sets. I can customize this and I can set the world tax history to only show matching rows to the European countries. So in this European data set, we also have income group information. So low income, medium income, high income, 
divided into quintiles. So let me use this as a trellis column. And now I can see the average and the distribution of rates per country per income group. Quintile 1 is low income, quintile 5 is high income, and we can see that as we go up, the tax percentage increases. We can also see that within a given income group, the tax rate vary a lot between different countries. But the chart here is pretty busy, right? So why don't we just filter it out just for top 10 uh, gross product countries? So we can use the filter type top and bottom N for this, and we leave the value 10 by default, but the chart seems to only filter for two countries. In fact, it filters for top 10 records because it says by all attributes in the visual. So if I select only by country ISO, I will get the top 10 countries filter no matter what other attributes are in the chart. So here we see our top 10 countries and France is still way below average for this group. So let's represent this as a different visualization. A box plot, for instance, so we see the spread. Oh, but we need to move the country object as a detail grammar here because that's the grain that will be used by the box plot. So here we see the spread of tax income rate for each country per income group. So the spread reduces as income increases and tax rate converge for higher incomes. So we also have sales tax. Let me bring it into that box plot. And now we have a pretty interesting visualization comparing the relative income rate of sales tax versus direct taxes. And we can see that they're inversely proportional. Direct and indirect tax rate gradually grows as one's income increase, but the proportion represented by sales tax diminishes. This visual is appropriate for more individuals than just top 10. So let me disable the filter on top 10 and now we see all the European countries. Let's drag the GDP as a size grammar here so we can see every dot and the size of GDP. So just to recap what we did here, we started from plain and simple public tax data and within a few minutes of discovery using Oracle DV, we got a clear trended representation of government funding as percent of GDP by region. We then looked at the same trend in real dollars by nature of taxes, showing very contrasting trends and identifying major sources of funding for governments by region. And then we converted the trend into a per capita metric, which revealed huge discrepancies between region. We also created a filtered metric just to highlight one country versus the rest of the world. And finally, we compare these insights with taxes being measured as a percent of individual income. And this revealed very interesting counterintuitive insights that we would never have suspected from the previous analysis. If you look in the description of the video, you will find a link where you can access this project live. Thank you for watching this video.